welcome back to the second channel. We're back at it again. And guys, today is a very special day because I just uploaded on the main channel. Woohoo! Yes, we just uploaded on the main channel. Another video. We're back at it again on here and on the main channel. The video I uploaded on the main channel is using 2000s technology for weeks. So if you haven't seen that, go watch this before this because I'm going to be ranking all the different technologies I used in this video. But as you can see up here, we've got a lot of the technology we use. Not all of it. We'll get into that. And we've got our tier list here, which as you can see, we've got the top category, which is goated, which is then followed by the great category category, which is obviously stuff that was great, but not quite goated. Then below that, we've got decent for stuff that was just decent. Wasn't particularly great, wasn't particularly bad. It was just decent. Then we've got the meh category, which I mean, this is all pretty self-explanatory. It was meh, it wasn't great. And then finally, we've got the awful category, which as I'm sure you can guess, is for awful stuff. If you've seen the video, you'll recognize all this stuff down here, but we are going to start with probably the main thing we used in the video, even though you actually didn't see it that much. You saw the footage from it, and that is this. This thing right here, my camera. This is a pan Panasonic HTC SD1. This is the camera, as you can see. It's actually pretty cool. As you saw in the video, I paid about £100 for this. I think it was slightly more. It was about 120 but it did come with two batteries. So when I rank this stuff, guys, I'm mainly going to rank it on how good the quality is and how usable it is in 2024. Now, this camera, as you saw, is pretty usable. We filmed the whole video on it, and it didn't look too bad. I know it didn't look great. It wasn't this level quality, but for a 20-year-old camera, it held up pretty good. And the main reason I picked this camera, I did a lot of research into camcorders to try and find the best one. However, this one, as I said, in the video is the first ever camcorder to take SD cards, which for me was the main reason I bought this because it just made my life so much easier. A lot of the camcorders I was looking at looked really, really cool and had a really nice effect, but they literally filmed onto like mini tapes, which for me, I couldn't be bothered to do that because A, tapes are very expensive because they don't really make them anymore because they're kind of useless because people moved onto SD cards. So I went for the most digital camera I could get. So to rank this camera, I'm going to put it in decent, okay? I would say this is a great camera for its time, but in 2024, it's not great. <laughs> That's to put it lightly. However, what I will say though, I am going to keep this camera and I'm going to keep filming stuff on it because I really like the effects of it. It's a very retro vibe. And yeah, I feel like this is a really cool camera to take out with your friends, you know, just film some random stuff, take it on holiday. I don't know. So yeah, I'm going to find some use to this. I am going to keep this. A lot of the stuff from this video, I will be selling because I don't need it, which actually brings me on to the next thing. Probably the biggest thing we bought, this TV. It is currently sideways. This Sharp TV I bought from Facebook Marketplace and I actually paid quite a lot of money for it for what it is. I think I I paid £30 for it, which I'm not gonna lie, I got ripped off. In fact, let me just show you the messages. So obviously, as you guys know, my Facebook is Georgia Mason. So I had to message people as Georgia Mason, which was very awkward. So basically, this TV was advertised, Sharp TV, 32 inches. So I messaged, is this available? Could I collect today? And Andreas replied, hi, yes, it's available. Happy for collection to be today. What time? So I replied, this is where it gets a bit tricky because obviously I'm not Georgia Mason. I can send my son to collect for 2 p.m. What's the postcode? Obviously, I could have said to him, by the way, my name's not George and my real name's George and also I'm not a woman I'm actually a man and also I'm not six years old I'm actually in my 20s I just like to role play on Facebook as a character imagine you're trying to sell your old TV on Facebook marketplace and someone tells you that there's no way you're going to sell it to them so I had to disguise myself as George's son I mean to be fair I am George's son I'm Jeremy Mason yeah he then sent me the postcode and then I was actually like, wait, hold on, this TV is £40. I don't want to pay £40 for this TV. So I said, are you willing to go any lower on the price? £40 might be too much. So then Andreas replied, hi, sorry, afraid not. I have someone else that has asked for it, but we'll give it to you first. And I just didn't respond because I was like, all right, you know what? I'll find a better TV. This one's £40. So I didn't reply, right? However, he then replied one minute later. If you can collect at 3 p.m., I'm happy to let it go for 35. So this guy really went from no, I'm afraid not, no less than 40. I've got someone else willing to buy it. I'm doing you a favor to one minute later being like, okay, actually, I'll give you a five pound discount. Just come collect it, please. So I said to him, look, Andreas, can we save 30 pound cash at 3 p.m.? And he said, okay, I will accept. It worked. We got the TV. I mean, I say it worked. I still got a scam. This TV is not worth 30 pounds. I think I'm gonna have to give it away for free because I don't think anyone's actually gonna want this. It's not a great TV, which reminds me, we are doing a tier list here. This is not a Facebook video. So as I said, this is not a great TV. I wouldn't give it decent. I'll give it meh just because it's, it's okay. For the time, it was probably a good TV. But for 2024, it's definitely not a good TV. It's good for playing PlayStation 2 because it does have the slots that you need for a PlayStation 2, but that's about the only benefit of it. The picture's not great. I couldn't get TV channels on it. It wasn't quite an awful TV, but it definitely wasn't decent. So we're giving it a mare. If anyone wants this TV, let me know. And I'll sell it to you for £35. I'm making profit, guys. All right, next up, we're going to be ranking the iMac G4. Now this thing, this is a hard one because I genuinely really, really like this computer. As you saw in the video, it is pretty useless. The internet doesn't work very well. 
well. The only things you can actually do on it that actually kind of work well is writing Word documents and also using that GIMP program, which you can basically just draw pictures on. So in terms of the actual software of the computer, I would say it's pretty meh. However, the thing that I love about this computer is the design. I can't explain to you guys. Look, let me just show you. I don't know if you'll be able to tell on camera, but the design of this computer is just so sick. I genuinely can't explain it, but there's just something so satisfying about this computer. Like just moving the screen around, it's so smooth. It literally feels like a gimbal. Like even just the design itself, it's quite futuristic. So yeah, honestly for me, I really do like the design. However, the actual computer itself isn't very good. I'm gonna put it in decent, right? I'm gonna put it there, even though it made my life hell and wasn't particularly decent. As a computer, it did run smoothly, apart from the video editing. But as a whole, if the internet worked, I think I would put it in great. So I'm gonna put it in decent just because the internet didn't really work. But design-wise, guys, come on, look at this. What other computers do in this? All right, moving on, next up, we're gonna rank the iPhone one. Now this one's a bit of a weird one because I genuinely didn't want to use this in the video. As you guys know, I've already done two videos on the iPhone one, so I felt like it was kind of pointless me using it. I wanted to get a new phone. I wanted to get something different. However, as you saw, the phone that we bought didn't arrive and I need to film this video. So I started with this and honestly, this phone for me, is it great? It's definitely not great. It's, it's decent again, but I will put it in front of the iMac just because it's a little more functional. It's got a camera on it. It's not particularly good. And it's also got a lot more games on it. If you jailbreak it, you can download a lot more stuff on here. So for me, this was a lot more helpful than the computer was. However, with the internet, just like the computer, it was very limited of what I could do on it. But for a nearly 20 year old phone, this is a good phone. Next up, we're going to do another phone because this one's actually interesting, right? So this phone, I don't actually have on me because I returned it. Because as you saw in the video, it just stopped working. It was so strange. Literally, when I bought it, it arrived and straight away had batteries so I used it literally for the whole day and then as you saw the next day I woke up it was completely flat even though it's literally been on charge and then at first if I had it on charge it would work I, I could turn it on and it would work but as soon as I unplugged it it would go off however eventually it literally just wouldn't even come on at all so they accepted the return however I actually did do a little bit of research to see if this was like a common error and I found out something that actually shocked me so if I just search Motorola Razr V3 which is what the phone's called right and then you look down to this YouTube short here I got scammed how to identify a fake Motorola now I'm not gonna react to this whole video but basically this guy explains how he did a video buying a Motorola and then everyone in the comments was like this is fake this is fake this is fake and then I checked through the footage and I was like wait mine might have been fake too and I'm pretty sure it was so look so basically as I said this guy did a video about it and then he got this comment saying that's a counterfeit slash fake. Clear indicators are the wrong labeling on the camera and the poor Motorola M logo. Well, welcome to the club. Apparently I also did too. I didn't realize this during the week because I had no internet to check. So yeah, then I found this website showing the differences between the real and the fake. So as you can see, the left is an authentic Razer V3 and on the right is a counterfeit Razer V3. So these are the ways to check from just the outside. So yeah, I got scammed with this phone. So for that reason, I'm going to put it in all four. In fact, you know what? It's not even the fact that it was fake. Even though it was fake, it actually was a pretty good phone. If I didn't know it was fake, I probably would maybe put in decent because it does everything that you actually need it to do however it literally lasted less than 24 hours and then just stopped working so for that reason i'm gonna put it in awful but i think if we had a real one i might even put it in great you know it was a great for in fact you know what let, let me get two here. So we got two now. So the fake one goes in awful, just based off the fact that it literally lasted less than 24 hours and then broke. But the real one, not that I ever had one, based off just the small experience I had with the fake one, I would say that was great. So for this, Honestly, I'm putting in goated. Honestly, flip phones are underrated. Just having one for less than 24 hours, it felt so good. Like with my iPhone, if someone phones me, I'm like, oh, who the hell is this? I'm not answering that. Like I never answer phone calls. I just text people. But with flip phones, I was so excited to answer the phone because I could literally just be like, flip, hello? And then when I was done talking, I'd just be like, okay, bye. Honestly, after that week, I'm actually tempted to buy one of the Samsung flip phones. I don't know if I could leave Apple and go to Android though, but just for the fact of shutting it, it feels so good, guys. Yeah, moving on next, let's do the PlayStation. Now for PlayStation, I think this has got to go in great. In fact, you know what? I'm putting in Goated. The PlayStation 2 is an iconic PlayStation. I mean, I think I am a bit biased because this was my first ever gaming console. So it has a special place in my heart. Yeah, the graphics aren't great. Yeah, you've got to have memory cards for it. But I don't know, for me, I think it purely is nostalgia. I love going back to this. I had a lot of fun, which then brings us onto the game. So first off, Pro Evolution Soccer 2008. This game cost me 50p, and I'm not gonna lie, this game is going straight into meh. This game wasn't great. It wasn't bad. Well, it was bad actually. It just wasn't awful, but it wasn't decent. The graphics on this were awful. This game's actually so hard. I was playing this on the second lowest difficulty and I could barely score a goal. It was actually really hard. I was quite surprised because I play football games a lot. But I don't know, this game for me, I really struggled with it. I did enjoy playing it, but in modern day, the graphics were just awful. So yeah, it definitely belonged in the meh category. But then again, for 50p, I can't really complain. It was 50p. And then of course, the legendary game, the game that I played the most this week, Simpsons Hit and Run. Now for me, this is going 
straight up to the top into goated again this is probably a nostalgia thing for me these two things just go together when i was younger this is one of the first games i remember playing and yeah i just had so much fun playing this i spent so much time playing this even off camera not filming it i completed the whole game like that's how much time i spent on it so yeah honestly simpsons hit and run underrated game well actually it's not underrated it might be overrated actually because it cost me 25 pounds literally how did i pay 25 pounds this game got released in like 2001 i think and i paid 25 pounds for it but yeah despite the price simpsons hit and run stays in goated for me one of the best games ever even to this day it's still really good yeah moving on next door to well we're on the playstation terms let's do the playstation portable for me i'm gonna put this into great just because again it's nostalgia i think i said in this video but this playstation is actually my childhood one. There are a few problems with it. As you can see, it's still got the original screen protector on it and it also is missing this thing right here. There's supposed to be like a cover over but that. But it does still work. However, there is one big issue with this, which is probably why I should put it in decent, actually. Yeah, we're going to put it in decent. It was making this horrible sound before. Literally the worst squeaking sound. I literally had to stop playing it on the train because it was literally embarrassing me. There it is! Did you hear that? It sounds like a fox. Like, you know when you hear foxes in the night? That's literally what it sounds like. It's a horrible sound. And just for that, I do have to move out. Great. I guess this is a bit of a biased thing because if it didn't do that, I probably would say it was great. As a whole, I would say PSPs are great, but this one isn't great because it embarrasses me on the train, right? But yeah, moving on, we have a TV remote here. Why did I put this here? I don't really know. This goes in decent it worked <laughs> there's not much more to say it's a tv remote next up we've got the skateboard now this one isn't really technology but it was replacing technology so it counts now for the skateboard i'll put this in great you know what i don't know anything about skateboards this probably isn't a great skateboard if you actually know anything about skateboards but for a beginner for someone like me this is a great skateboard it was comfortable to ride and you know what i can't complain about it right next up we got something that actually didn't make it into the video and this right here is a dvd player so this was actually the first thing i bought for the video so look this is a dvd player there, right it came came with a remote even came with a manual however the only wire it came with was this now for anyone that knows old tvs this is like the audio wire so basically with old technology instead of like hdmi cables they had these three things they had the white red and yellow however they only gave me the wire to the yellow one so yeah this dvd player was absolutely useless once again i got scammed i did only pay 10 pound for this so it wasn't too bad so yes once again i got scammed i wasted 10 pound and now i'm just stuck with a dvd player with no wires so yeah for that the dvd player goes straight into awful it was very awful at least the fake phone worked for a few hours but then finally onto the last thing yes there are still two things i don't know how to get rid of this because i did the fake and the real one now we've just got this plain one but ignore that on to the last thing the ipod nano now, i'm not gonna lie i really like this ipod this ipod for me was one of the few things this week that i was like you know what i actually could use this in everyday life there's something about this design that it's just so smooth using this like dial to turn stuff turn the music up turn the music down to go up and down it's just all so smooth and feels really nice to use even in the year 2024 it doesn't feel that outdated and when i was using it i was like you know what i might actually continue to use this even when i get my phone back i might stick with this but then i was like actually why would I do that? There's literally no point in doing that. My iPhone literally has this built into it. So why would I carry a separate this with me? I think the thing I more so like about this is the fact that it isn't linked to the internet. So the songs you have on it are the only songs you've got. Whereas with this, you can literally listen to any song on the planet. If you've got Spotify or Apple Music, or even if you don't, even if you've just got internet, you can go on YouTube, listen to any song you want. Whereas with this, you've got to download the songs, then load it onto your iPod. And that's what you're stuck with. Wherever you go until you add new songs to it, that's all you've got. And yeah, I don't know, just something so simple about this is just, I really like it. And I think for that, this is going and go to. For me. As I said, in the year 2024, the fact I enjoyed using this and was like, I actually would use this in everyday life. Obviously, I don't need to because I have got an iPhone. But that's not the point, all right? I would use this in everyday life. And for that, this is a goated item. And with that, guys, that completes our tier list. We've got four goated items, one great item, five decent items two met items and two awful items and that is what it's like living with technology from the 2000s let me know what you thought guys let me know if you agree let me know if you disagree would you move anything up would you move anything down let me know what you think down below yeah guys on that note this has been george mason if you have enjoyed make sure you like comment and subscribe it's been george mason over and out boom